Ellie, oh. Ellie, stand back there and say, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Banana! Okay. It's hard to believe, but it's been a year since I purchased the cheapest turbo Porsche in the USA. This 2004 Cayenne Turbo for only $6,100. A year ago, I discovered that depreciation had taken its toll on these 450 horsepower twin turbo beasts, making them attainable for less than the old cheapest turbo Porsche, the 944. When I bought this thing sight unseen at a dealer auction for only $6,100, I couldn't believe how cheap it was, and I was really worried that it had serious issues. Turns out I lucked out for once. For those who follow my channel regularly, you know this usually doesn't happen. So today I'm going to tally up the cost of ownership on my Cayenne Turbo over the last year, as well as talk about the things that I like and don't like about it. So if you like me, but you don't like the sound of my voice, it sounds like a weird game show host, yeah, I totally agree. You can click the link below on autotrader.com slash overseer, where I talk about this and a lot more over the past year with my Cayenne Turbo. So I bought this Cayenne out of Florida and actually had Devarge pick it up for me. Yeah. The, the charred Lambo dude. He said it was decent, but noted a misfire that appeared to be sabotaged by someone at the auction, hoping for it to go cheaper. They pulled the coil just enough to separate it from the spark plug to make it misfire, but not look like anything was wrong, and it's probably why I got it so cheap. Lucky me. I spent $1,000 shipping this car from Florida to Wichita and found that it only had minor issues, like a height sensor for the air ride suspension really easy, it only cost $200 to fix, and a vacuum leak that was another $200 or so to fix. With a fresh oil change, my Cayenne Turbo was given a full clean bill of health, which is pretty incredible. But even more amazing is the next six months and 6,000 miles rewarded me with total reliability. Not a single issue other than the horrible 13 miles per gallon that I was averaging. Yeah, really bad, that bad. It climbed a ski mountain and it managed to tow a Jeep all the way up there and haul me all around the Midwest. And it did this without any problems and it was extremely comfortable and pretty fast. I love this thing. After six months, I decided to spruce things up a bit, starting with these 22 inch wheels and fresh Continental tires, as well as lowering links for the suspension. This allowed the stock air ride system, which is way more reliable than a Mercedes or Land Rover's air ride system for some reason, that dropped this thing to the ground, gave it that nice stanced look. Stan's Nation, yo. And the blacked out trim looks really cool too. Whole murdered out kit. And of course, these beautiful headlights. Really, it makes this Cayenne look five, six years newer, like a 2010. It's really sharp, but I spent a lot of money on it. Now, the next six months weren't quite as trouble-free, unfortunately. It did break twice, but it was at the hands of the same person. Actually, a friend of mine who was interested in buying this car, and both times that he test drove it, it broke. The first time, a vacuum line broke off the brake booster, making the pedal super hard to push. I'd driven it the entire week prior and just minutes before, so it's weird. But it was a simple $90 fix. But the next time he drove it, it broke again. This time he tried out the low range and it got stuck, refusing to disengage. The wizard was able to clean the transfer case actuator to get it working again for only 45 bucks, but he suggested if I plan to use the low range ever again, I should replace it. That part is $700, so I definitely haven't touched the transfer case buttons at all. No. <laughs> The other unscheduled repair happened after I had the bumper resprayed due to a giant crack that I made worse after I bumped into it and then the whole bumper shattered. Apparently their body shop popped a fuse while removing the headlights and uh, they swapped a fuse over to make the headlights work again, but then they forgot to replace that other fuse. And apparently that one was pretty important since when I picked up the car, literally every warning light was on and the speedometer didn't work. The wizard was completely stumped by this. I didn't know that a fuse was missing at the time. I know that now. So I had to take it to the dealer to figure out what the hell happened. This cost me $380 for some dealer tech to clean corroded wires, you know, connections for 380 bucks and until he actually found what was actually wrong and that was a missing fuse. Really, I can't complain because I thought it was going to be a horrific bill and the body shop was nice enough to actually repair the bumper, which no body shop in the nation would have wanted to do, except he's a friend of mine 
So he saved me about seven, eight hundred dollars fixing this bumper rather than replacing it. So I wasn't going to go after him for, you know, the three hundred dollars at a dealer. No, 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 I'm too nice. Well, I mean, he's a nice guy, too. The only scheduled repair I elected to do was the sway bar links is after installing these 22 inch wheels, these dubs, these ramps. Really cool. The front end started clunking, but this wasn't too bad of a fix. Even though it was a pretty bad clunk, it was only $150 to fix. So if you total up the purchase price and shipping at $7,100 with repairs for the year at only $915, I was sitting in this car for only, you know, a little over $8,000 without the mods, without the paint and the wheels and the headlights. If I had just left it all alone and made it pretty, I would have owned this Cayenne for almost free as I could easily sell it for close to what I have into it. Seven, eight thousand dollars easy. But I seem to never learn my lesson, and all of those upgrades I made cost almost three thousand dollars, and they added zero value to the car. Nothing. Clearly, I've gotten a little lucky, but it also seems like this is one of those rare convergences where the right combination of parts makes an otherwise troublesome vehicle pretty reliable, as these turbo drivetrains are known to be pretty stout, unlike the normal V8 and V6 models, and it's reported that the air suspension is remarkably reliable. I know, weird. But anyway, listen to that turbo engine. Yes. This magical combination makes the Cayenne really fun to drive in various applications as it has a locking transfer case with the max height suspension, it's pretty good off-road. But the 450 horsepower engine, God, the Sifter suspension settings too, make this thing really fun to drive on the pavement as well. Just a great all-around car. This thing also has really comfortable seats, like insanely comfortable and a really nice bow stereo, although mine is a little glitchy, but everything in here still works fine. Considering it's Volkswagen electronics, I may just be really lucky, but this thing's, it just works. It's always worked. Now I did take it up that ski mountain, which really wasn't that hard, but this thing in stock form, could do a lot more, a, a lot more. And really putting the 22 inch wheels on it kind of neutered the prospect of it being in any kind of capable off-roader, but it sure does look good. And with the air ride suspension in comfort mode, even with the 22 inch wheels, this thing is so smooth, it's so quiet. And I love how heavy it is, this heavy feeling, but it's not in a giant SUV like an Escalade or a Expedition. It's still a medium-sized vehicle that you can still put in a parking stall or zip around town. It really is perfect, other than the 13 miles per gallon and the fact that it could break at any second. Really on the surface, the quality of this car does seem really nice as far as the finishes, the leather trim dash, the aluminum trim, it's all really nice. But there are a few things that do concern me about this car and it's what's underneath, starting with the wiring. When my painter showed me the condition of the wiring harness for the headlights, which I did replace, I was totally shocked. It could have shorted out the entire car at any moment or worse, burned it to the ground. And that's actually the wiring found throughout the car. There's so much heat in the engine bay that that would degrade first. But I've also read on an online forum when I was researching the issue that turned out to be that missing fuse, that there's also wiring that degrades in the foot well that will short out and uh, cause problems as well. Pretty freaky. So in another 15 years, it may be a miracle that you're still seeing these on the road. I don't know, because there's just miles and miles of wiring throughout this car. And if it's not gonna hold together, there's, there's no way these things will still be running. No way. Now, another thing I'm worried about as far as long-term prospects of this Cayenne is with the vacuum lines. I've had to fix them twice, two different times, and really all that I did was have the car wizard glue them back together. They're hard plastic lines, and as they age, they get brittle and just fall apart. 
Now this is throughout the car, throughout the engine. Even though the engine and transmission may last forever, it'll run like garbage with these broken vacuum lines. And it's kind of the same story with the Bentley Continental GT Turbo that I sold and took a huge hit on. Those vacuum lines were junk and they were making the car run like garbage. And to fix that, it requires completely dropping out the engine. And on this Cayenne Turbo, that job would cost more than this thing's worth. Not very good prospects for this thing as it ages. So anyway, forget about all the crap that I just set in there because for only $8,000 or $7,000 with a special coupon you can find in my link below on autotrader.com slash oversteer, this could all be yours. Now, I'm joking about the coupon, but really, a 450 horsepower twin turbo, 5,000 pound SUV that accelerates to 60 in about five and a half seconds and can tow a 747 can be all yours for $7,000. And look at it. Would you just look at it? Oh, I even had it all detailed and it didn't get stolen this time which kind of sucks because I have full coverage on it, but I learned my lesson. But anyway, as for what I'm getting to replace my Cayenne Turbo, well, I've already bought it. I have bought three of them to replace it. I know, doesn't make any sense. But I have the Lexus LX470 so I can get my SUV fix. It's sitting in the garage, drying out right now after what happened earlier. Still kind of stinks. For my techie kind of wanting something fast, I have the Tesla. Tesla's still doing great, but I still had to get my Porsche fix, so I bought a crappy old Porsche too. It's kind of a, you know, ratty old thing. But anyway, goodbye Cayenne. Hopefully I'll find you a nice home, better home than this, and thank you for watching. I can't sell this, what am I thinking?